Morning. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to our series on heaven, and uh, we're with Rex uh, today, and uh, we're going to be picking uh, picking some ideas from each other. But um, what we what we're trying to do is is highlight the fact that we don't talk about heaven enough, and we don't think about it a lot. We uh, we just we just don't talk about it, which is bizarre. And uh, we were bouncing some ideas off uh, this book called Heaven, Randy Alcorn. And uh, it's really led to an interesting study that we're going through. And yeah, what's the attraction of heaven if you don't think about it? Why do you want to go there? And it's exactly. just because you've been told that you're supposed to want to go there. Apparently. Everybody's told you want to go to Nirvana. You want to go to it's, it's, a paradise. It's sort of like a blind, I won't say blind faith, but it's, it's you've just been told that's where you want to go. And I go, yes, I just blindly accept. I think but, you just did say it's a blind why, faith. Well, yeah, I know. But it's... <laughs> It's sort of cultish to just just go with it. Well, how do I know it's good? How do I know it's a good place? Well, you're told it's a good place. That's all you seem to know about it. That's all we're told. It's a good place. But can we explore that? Yeah. How do you set your affections on things above mm. if you never think about it? Yeah. Your affections. What What are you attracted to? Just the idea that it's a good place? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. It's hard to get excited about. I mean... Generally speaking, if you're going on a vacation, right? If you're going on a vacation, you probably looked at the brochures. Yeah, yeah. Or we're, you've we're or you've gone to the website. Yeah, you've checked it out. And you've, you've checked it out. You've looked for things to do. You're, right. Oh, this is cool. Get excited about because it. Because quite honestly, if there is nothing to do, right? If you're going on a vacation, yeah. And all you're going to do is sit in a hotel room. I think I'm staying home, saving my money. I. I'm not even sure I want to go and just sit on a beach. I mean, mm. I mean that's cool. Sitting on a beach is cool. Mm. Watch it, listen to the waves, whatever. Mm. That's cool. But what else is there to do there, right? Yeah. The, you know, you want to do something, something interesting. Uh, I don't know, go scuba diving or whatever. Yeah. Get on one of those kite things. What what can they do there? You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, they pull behind a boat, whatever, and yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, I'll look for you at the beach in heaven. Anyway, yeah, I'm the one that get grubs along the bottom slips. <laughs> yeah, the the idea of um, well, when people t- when people talk about heaven and stuff, a lot of people tell me, "Oh, you, you can't know, and you you shouldn't know." Or you what scripture like in Second Corinthians chapter two, uh, verse ten and nine? Sorry, it says, "However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him." Now, at first glance, that sounds like we're not going to know. But that's not what this, this text is talking about. Does it mean that? What does it mean? Well, if you go to Isaiah 64, verse 6, as you were explaining earlier, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's simply uh, referring to that scripture, and as you were explaining to me, that it's, it's, it's really like, wow, we've never seen this before. We've never seen a God so loving and merciful and kind. It's, it's, it's a... Unbelievable. Yeah, the the thing we haven't seen is the God who acts on behalf of people like He does. Mm. It's not so much the things as it is the fact that He does that, yeah. and He could do things for you you have seen, mm-hmm. like He could answer your prayer. Right. Could, but it's more than that. It's yeah. that who's who before Christ had come, who had ever even thought of a God that would send His Son to die for you, yeah. and that specifically because the next verse says what? Can the very you? next verse is so important. But, changes the whole thing, but God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. So even if it is talking about heaven, which Mm. people will use to say that, then it's still saying the Holy Spirit has revealed to us information about that as Mm. well. So even if heaven is so great, just like Christ's coming was so great, Mm. if heaven is so great that it will boggle the mind, Mm. it doesn't mean that God hasn't told us about it. Okay, and so that's going to bring me back to we we assume that it's a non-physical realm, but God talks about gardens, cities, kingdoms, uh, golden paths, um, rivers, trees, all those kinds of things. It doesn't sound non-physical. Eh? You know, I look at Adam when he became a living being, uh, the word in the flesh, uh, until both body and spirit came together, he became that being. And this is, um, 
Yeah, well, the, the idea of resurrection is so important that that tangible body is still going to be in existence. We're still going to have a tangible realm. It's similar to the argument of accommodative language discussions. Mm. See, in accommodative language, you know, God uses statements like the hand of God is not too short. Mm. So, and then you'll hear people say, well, God doesn't have a hand. Mm. Well, he may be using that as an accommodative uh, language to sound anthropomorphic. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, maybe God does have a hand. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, or it's a metaphor. It doesn't, it's, it's not to be taken so literally. Mm -hmm. Right. But if it has no comparative meaning, mm -hmm. then it becomes a deception. Right. Or it could be a trans-dimensional idea. Could heaven be trans-dimensional? Sure. Mm. Very much so. I don't exactly know what I'm saying when I say that. Okay. But yeah. fifth dimension, I don't know. So this leads up, up and away. A question that I have. Um, we have wonderful brains. God's given us rational, logical brains. That We also have imagination. And so can we use our imagination to imagine what heaven's going to be like? To Good, i got a joke on imagination now. Can I use that? <laughs> of course you do. Okay, this is for the sake of your mom watching all the way from Australia. Okay. Imagine uh, Keegan being a failure to his mom and then stepping back into reality. Okay, I thought that was good. Uh, here's another one that I came up with. This is cute. Uh, so... I had a dream that uh, made a dessert out of sugar, cornstarch, and cocoa. Uh, if you want to make it in reality, I'm just putting it out there. Okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> pudding. 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 That's a reality. Okay. And that's the thing. they got to have pudding in heaven. they got to have, <laughs> have pudding chocolate. You, know, you don't want chocolate yeah, in heaven? How about no cookies? I'm out. Uh, shortbread. Or <laughs> flakies. <laughs> flakies had to be in heaven. <laughs> so we we can use our imaginations. We, you know, I, I would I would definitely say we have to be biblically inspired. We can't just make stuff up. I'll drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Yeah. Is he going to drink the fruit of the vine in the father's kingdom or not? It also sounds like there's a feast. It sounds like there's a table, there's, there's people having Why would time, he lie about eating. it? Why would he say such a thing and it be nothing like that? Nothing. Yeah. And why would God create one thing that doesn't parallel to the other thing he creates? Doesn't make sense. Yeah. So we can use our imaginations. The, the idea... Well, one of the well it doesn't take that big of an imagination if it's not that different from here in the sense of Correct. He's, they're parallels. I mean, they may be. They may look totally different. I mean, we may be translucent in heaven, okay? Mm. But I can't imagine us having our head on our foot yeah. or something like that. You know what I mean? It's just it's it's got to look or feel similar. God's a God it's got to feel similar. Order, not of chaos. Right. Yeah. It's got to be something that feels similar for the sake of our soul, the calmness that it would bring. If it doesn't, maybe, I don't know if the look is the right word, but if it doesn't feel similar, mm. maybe it is look similar. I don't know if we have eyes the same way as we do here or they're just more multidimensional, whatever the word is. Well, the reason I bring up imagination is because we need to engage our, our senses and our brains in order to set our minds on things above. I also tie in Philippians 4, 8 where... Set your minds on things that are true, noble, right. you know, worthy. All those good things. Put your minds there. Think about those things. Well, if Deliberate. we're made in the image of God, then at least in our minds, we're supposed to be similar to God, right? Mm. So even people who just so say, no, we're not, God doesn't have a body like us. We're not literally made in his image, which, of course, they have no way of knowing. They're just saying that, right? Yeah. They're just saying that, okay? Because unless the Bible had actually said that, which, which it doesn't. I haven't seen it. <laughs> but it, you know, it, but it, maybe he doesn't. And maybe it's only the internal of God that we're talking about. But even if it is it, only the internal of God, something similar. Then our brain thinks yeah. like his thinks, and we do things similar to him. And so for it to be radically different that we can't even imagine it, then it doesn't make any sense anymore. Mm. 
And, and this is what I want to get to because our imagination is actually very important in this. It's God given. It's, it's God given, and it, it helps us to get excited about this, right? Um, yeah. We shouldn't be astonished when we get to heaven that it looks the way it looks or feels the way it feels. Yeah. We should get there and go, it's amazing, but I'm not astonished. I'm not I astonished. get it. I'm not like, it couldn't be like this. Yeah. We're not going to get there and say, oh, I wish I hadn't come. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> if I'd have known it was like this, I'd have gone to hell. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's not going to be like that. Uh, when uh, this, this guy, Randy, was talking about Satan being the father of lies, we see Jesus talking about that in John chapter 8, I think it is. But Satan, when he speaks lies, he's actually speaking in his native tongue, his native language. And the idea to make heaven undesirable and to make heaven unimaginable takes heaven out of our hearts. And, and the very idea of not talking about heaven and not imagining heaven seems what Satan wants us to do. Well, even Satan doesn't want us to believe that he's real. Yeah. But he's real yeah. and he's in the now. Mm. And he lives on this planet mm. with us. That's real. Mm. You say, have you ever met him? I, I don't know. Mm. I think I've gone to church with some people related to him before. <laughs> but... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> liars. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. So, but is he real and is he tangible? Yes, yes, and yes. Mm -hmm. Just like God is real and tangible. He's real, he's tangible, mm -hmm. and so are the angels. And so, so to heaven, if it's real, then I can imagine it. Mm -hmm. In fact, this is an interesting thing I, I ran into one time. This is, we haven't talked about this, but uh, someone said this a long time ago, uh, and I, I've, I've found it to be true. Yeah. You cannot imagine something that doesn't exist. Yeah, okay. okay. So, so you say, well, what about the monsters of, of uh, Hollywood? They take things that exist and blend them. Mm. Like maybe they'll use the mouth of a cricket mm. and uh, the hands of a ant or the ant? tail. Yeah, you haven't seen it. <laughs> he grasped with her hands. And the tail and of a cat. That's actually what it says. Yeah. The tail of a cat, right. Mm -hmm. It's just like that. But it's not something that doesn't exist. You've used the things that exist. In fact, you cannot think of a thing that either doesn't exist or cannot exist. Mm. It's a good, yeah, good point. So our imagination is limited. Yeah. We, for example, if I want to talk it's about limited to things that are that exist. Right. So yeah. we're we're three dimensional, right? Yeah. Uh, well, you can talk about fourth dimension, mm -hmm. but honestly, it, it it's impossible to draw it properly, mm -hmm. and you cannot think of it and hold it clearly in your head. Yeah. And the same, and then if you were to go fifth dimensional, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, could a mathematician maybe hold it in his head a little better? Yeah, probably. But uh, could a physicist maybe a little better? Probably. But we don't know that it exists even mm -hmm. because it's so hard to hold in our head. I was, I was listening to people talking about eight dimensions now, which is kind of cool. But that's a different topic. Yeah. But it is. There's this. Oh, that's supposed to be eleven, right? Oh, I think it's supposed to be eleven. Yeah. But that's so physicists. Coming back to this, what you're saying is that if we can imagine it, it is it's real. There is a real factor behind that. So why are we astonished that heaven is real? It is peculiar, isn't it? <laughs> that's just peculiar that it's almost like, well, it can't be real. Well, it's almost like we think we go to heaven, it's just a dream. Mm. And dreams aren't real. And so that's how we go to heaven. Yeah. It's our last fading thought because we were a good person and then we just go away. That sounds more like an atheist than it sounds like it's, a believer. It's like we don't believe in the hope that we've been given. God's given us a promise and we're going, yeah, yeah, we like it, but we're not sure. Well, let's just talk about how many times the Bible kind of indicates that it's a real place. Mm -hmm. John 14, 1 through 4, I go to prepare a place for you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew 8, 11 and 12 says, 
sit down, they'll sit down mm -hmm. in the tabernacle. Jesus sits down in the tabernacle. Uh, Matthew 10, 33, uh, you'll be, you'll be brought before the Father. Uh, that takes a place. Uh, eight, Matthew 18, verse 10, in heaven you'll see his face. Uh, Luke 15, verse 7, there's joy in heaven. It's actually a place. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 2 calls it a habitation that we will have. Uh, Philippians 3, 20 talks about that we are, we will be in heaven. Uh, Hebrews 9 verse 24 talks about how he's in the tabernacle which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, Hebrews 12 and verse 26 talks about uh, even heaven will be shaken the, when the, the world comes to an end. And if it doesn't exist, it can't be shaken. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 20 talks about how that uh, we, uh, Jesus has gone into heaven. Well, if it's not a place, you can't go there. Exactly. You can't be in it. You can't go there. So it's clearly a real place. It can't be a habitation if it isn't real. Hmm. It has to be a real place. Yeah. Now, okay. Let's explore that then. Sure. Because that's what this is about. So he also talks about a real city. Right. Okay. Abraham looked for a city mm -hmm. who had foundations whose builder and maker was God. It was almost as if he had been allowed to see it. Mm. And then he had looked for it everywhere he traveled. Mm. But yeah. if it's not real, what was he looking for? And what had he seen? Mm. It, it brings and, and, you... And, and, sorry, when we're talking about a city, he has something to look for. Though. It, it, there's, there's a description of, oh, I know what a city is. I know what to sort of right. look for. And it's got I know shops. What, I know what I'm going to recognize. It's got streets, yeah, I'm houses. I'm going to recognize a city. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not just trees. Yeah, exactly. It's not just rivers. Mm. There's a, there's a, a population. A, there's a design to it. There's a population in a city. Mm. There are structures in a city. Uh, there's pathways in a city. There's things to purchase in a city things to sell in a city, things to do in a city. It has structure, purpose, systems, systems upon systems. So there's a McDonald's in the city? Or? If it, it won't be heaven without McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, like Revelation. That's a American thing there. <laughs> yeah, Revelation uh, 21. You know, it talks about the new Jerusalem. Yeah. And uh, yep. we're told that it's the mother of us all in Galatians. So it, mm. but it, it, Revelation 21, you know, it descends and, and this city flies. Yeah. So clearly it's different, but not different because it's still a city. Yeah. I haven't seen a flying city, but I know something flies when it's in the air and I know what a city looks like. I put the two together. I go, okay. There's going to be a city up there somewhere. <laughs> it makes sense that it could descend if it is above. Mm -hmm. So it is the city above. What's shocking that it could descend. So now we're talking about location in a sense. Right. So in the Jerusalem, which is above, would be parallel to what we would call a capital city. Mm. Like the primary city of God. That seems to be Abraham's look, the city of God. Yeah. So it's not necessarily the only city. Yeah. But it is the city of God. Because mm. I want to go down this path because we also hear Jesus saying, I'm preparing a place for you. My father has a house with many rooms. So so what's the what what's your best explanation for God's house and then God's city? And and it seems like we're in this house. With him, but there's also a city. So who's going to be there? Well, if we go spiritual, we're already in the Father's house, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're in the kingdom of God. We're in the family of God. So we're in the house of God. Yeah. Okay. So that's the spiritual meaning of it. Yeah. If there is a physical meaning of it, if you live in your Father's house, you literally live mm -hmm. in your Father's house. Yeah. And so Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy self, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anointed my head with oil. 
Uh, my cup runneth over. over. Yeah. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, everything up into that moment is taken literally. Why wouldn't the house of the Lord be real and you live in it forever? Now, does that mean you can't go outside? Of course not. Does that mean that... that oh, you can go to the city. You can, go to the city. You can, yeah, go to the beach. And so, in the idea of him preparing a place, I don't know all that that means. I know the spiritual meaning of it is that Christ died on the cross and prepared a place for us through the death on the cross. Or but is there construction going on in heaven? It could be. On the other hand, it may be because God has infinite knowledge. He built there the place you're going to live in way long ago. Yeah. You know, and for all I know, the house may refer to literally the body that will be immortal for that matter. Mm. I mean, that could be the house. But it makes more sense that the house would be a house. Mm. That's just, sorry, that yeah. just makes sense that it would be a house. Yeah. <laughs> Something you live in, you rest in, you eat in, you kick around, you know, or pick up your yeah. stuff that you left in and take it with go, you next time. Visit people. Uh, take the groceries back too, whatever, you know. Mm. And they eat in heaven, so there may be groceries, which may mean you need yeah. a grocery store. Yeah, and, it's pretty clear. I mean, in Revelation, we're talking about the celebration and, and, and people at the table and feasting and, and fruit. There's a lot of discussion all about but, fruit. But you're eternal. You don't, eat, you don't need to eat. You don't do stuff like that because you ate, you'd have to go to the bathroom. And there's not going to be any bathrooms in heaven. And certainly there's no nothing like and, and it just gets silly because I feel like, you know, why not just take it at face value that it means exactly what it says? Yeah. And why do we have to turn everything into a metaphor? Why does mm. it have to be transdimensional? Why does it have to be ethereal? Yeah. Why can't it just be the way it says it? Why not just take God at his word? Yeah. You know, it's a it's a real house. Mm. Yeah, it's a real feast. It's a, it has walls. There is a real, re yeah, there's a real reward. Material of some sort. There's a real reward to what we're, we're doing here. And, you know, this is not eternal. This is not eternal. I recognize yeah. this is different. This is not eternal. That sounds like it's eternal. So whatever it's made of, if you could say it's made of something, which I assume that's the only way to describe it, it's eternal stuff. There's no decay. I'm guessing. Is, yeah. Maybe. Or maybe we just have to put some no decay scrub on it every now and then. I don't know. <laughs> Go to the from no the, decay store and pour it all over your house so it doesn't the, decay. From the tree of love. From the tree of, I don't know. The in it, yeah. I, I don't know. But the idea of it not being a house is silly. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's just going too far just because it doesn't make you feel comfortable. Mm. So it's, it's not only a real place and a real city and a real house, but it's a real paradise. And we go back to the illustration we were talking about last week. I mean, the real paradise in Genesis 2 mm. and before they ate of the tree of knowledge, good and evil, and they were kicked out. Yeah. That was a real place. You can't yeah. get kicked out of a place that yeah. doesn't exist. Yeah, we had the, the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers right. at that point, which is still there today. Right. So, it's so the rest place. of it we're confused about. But yeah, that's <laughs> right. And there's real gold. It says the gold of that land's good. Right. Do we have gold? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't. But <laughs> yeah. wait, I do. Wait, I got a little. Bit. So, so yeah. So it's a it's a real paradise with real. And if it's a paradise, what did they have there? They had fruits and vegetables. They didn't have to go somewhere else to eat. There's animals. There yeah, there were animals. He named them all from there. So yeah. So that sounds like what we think. So somebody says, well, where would you go? I would go to a paradise. Where would that be? I don't know, Tahiti or whatever, yeah. or Africa for that matter. And so you imagine being able to see the animals, right? Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's which amazing. which is awesome. Yeah, it is good fun, man. Yeah, I, I just love this idea that, that heaven, we can imagine it, and it is real. It is it is something that can excite us, that something I'm looking forward to seeing today. In, in fact, Paul is looking forward to seeing it. He's saying to, to die, all right? Is game right to, to to carry on living as Christ like, but to die, hey, <laughs> right. He's excited about going there. He's not he's not scared of what he's seen because remember he describes that he's been there in third heaven, Second Corinthians 12, 2 Corinthians yeah. 12, four. And so he's excited about whatever he's he's seen. He's ready for it, right? Right. And it wherever it was, that's an interesting thing. The third heaven. Mm -hmm. So first heaven's where the birds are, okay. second heaven's where the stars are, stars. and then the third heaven. So he's taken up to the third heaven. 
whatever that means, okay? Mm -hmm. But it almost sounds like it's beyond the stars. Yeah. But maybe not. Mm. Maybe it's just the way we think. Maybe not. Yeah. Uh, but it does sound like there's a real place. Whatever it is, it's going to descend on us. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> and maybe, maybe, and here's the thing too, is that we pray, uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Mm. Where to? Uh, what, sorry? Thy kingdom come. Where to? Yeah. To here. Yeah, exactly. Thy kingdom come. Come, yeah. So that kingdom up there comes here. Thy will be done on earth, earth as heaven. it is in heaven. So maybe earth becomes part of heaven. Correct. And this is where I want to take you to. So Second Peter chapter 3, the idea that the earth is made new, or there's a new earth, or if it's refined, I'm not sure on that one, but it sounds like there's a new world, New heaven and new earth. A new earth. That's Revelation 21 and, through and it, 4. It really replicates going back into the garden where I imagine you've got the earth and you've got heaven overlaying. We mess up, heaven goes away, and now God brings it back together again right? to, to restore what he, he put in place in the beginning. So it makes sense that there's that restoration of what God wanted. Well, there was a corruption. The devil got involved and he True. corrupted what was here, what God had created. Mm. So. so, the new earth, but once again, tangible, physical, touch, feel, smell, taste, all that kind of stuff. There's no reason to jump out of that. Mm. There's just no reason to jump out of it. Now, it's, you say, well, the book of Revelation is symbolic. Okay, I get that. Hebrews is not. But that's Hebrews, not Revelation, that's Second Peter. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and Hebrews uh, 11 is not symbolic either when it says that uh, Abraham looked for a city. Mm. And so everything's not symbolic here. Mm. Are there symbols? Yes. Symbols have other meanings, spiritual meanings. Absolutely. Yeah, You read it in its context and its narrative style and its I mean, geographical I stuff. Or... See, I understand the idea that the heavenly Jerusalem represents the kingdom of God and on earth today and the foundations, the various apostles. And I get all the symbolism that it means, but then to throw, if you have a symbol and there isn't a reality of it, then the symbol loses its meaning. Well, gotta, I mean, yeah. It's it, like the discussion of Satan in the Old Testament whenever you take all those texts and say, uh, he's like the covering cherub and, and things like that. And mm -hmm. granted, he's actually talking about the king of Tyre, what, whichever one you're looking at at that particular moment. There's two different passages. But there has to be a reality underneath that that's possible. Otherwise, the symbolism has no meaning. Correct. It's, I'll come back to the idea of um, when it says, I am the door. Jesus is saying, I am the door. We know he's not a literal door. I mean, that, that would be stupid to think he's a door. But we know the symbolism behind what he's saying because we know what a door does. We can right. go through the door. Jesus is saying, I am the door. We know he's speaking symbolically there. Correct. And it's so obvious. We need to take the scriptures as it's been written. Sometimes it's symbolic. Sometimes it's literal you know, and so on. Right. And it's not all one theme all the time with just metaphors. There are, there are different places for that, that, that exactly. interpretation. Yeah. Exactly. The same thing's true about when we come to, is there a reward in heaven? And, and some want to make it just getting there is the reward. It is one of the rewards to get there, hmm. but there are actually rewards in heaven and they're not all the same for everybody. Correct. Yeah. Because like Matthew 5 and verse 12, not everybody will have been persecuted at the same level. And yet it says, when you're persecuted, great is your reward in heaven. So that, what does that mean? That means everybody's got a great reward in heaven. Well, if everybody's got the equally great reward in heaven, what's the, no benefit in being persecuted, is it? Mm. And then Matthew 6 and 20, there's tre you can lay up treasures in heaven. Well, if you can lay up treasures in heaven, it implies the idea, the more you sacrifice, the more potentially your treasure would be. Mm. But note that, oh, everybody's got to get the same thing. Well, why go there if that's the case? Yeah. Uh, in Hebrews 10 and verse 34, uh, seeking a better possession in heaven. So you could, well, you won't possess anything in heaven. Of course you possess things. Well, for one thing, you possess yourself, right? Yeah. You actually possess yourself, even though uh, you actually belong to the Lord. But you do possess it. Your body is yours. It isn't mine. And mine's mine. You know, it's you possess it. So, And to have a better possession means... 
Slip that free will, you could not possibly have a lesser possession, but you have a better. And this uh, statement in 1 Peter 1 and verse 4, this inheritance is undefiled, incorruptible, and reserved in heaven. So these are real, tangible inheritances yeah. that we receive from the Father. Uh, what they are is up for a discussion, but that, that there are such things would be a lie to say that they don't exist. Well, a lot of people have an issue with this, and I'll tell you why I don't have an issue with this, is because what Peter and the disciples went through, compared to what I've gone through, man, they deserve a little bit more. I, I'm, I'm happy with that. You know, what, what they went through to, to you know, start this, um, you know, uh, what do you call it, the church there? You this get thing, it going, yeah. So whatever you call I'm it. Losing thing. my mind. But it's to get it going, they, they sacrifice so much. I haven't had to sacrifice as much as they have. And and there, there is a, a just reward that, that's that's coming for them. And I'm I think that's 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 just. Well it, it's to me it's it's similar to the argument about there's no such thing as big sins and little sins. Mm. That's just not the case. No. And the scripture is very clear about that. It's just people want to believe what they want to believe. Mm. But in the Old Testament, it's very clear there was punishment for one type of sin that wasn't for another type of sin. And even Jesus says when he was delivered to Pilate, he says, the one that delivered to me to you has the greater sin. Mm. And then he talks about in Matthew 23 that, uh, you know, there are greater matters or weightier matters, the law, mm. justice, mercy, and faith, and not just tithing mint and, and cumin. Mm. So that that's the idea that there could be greater matters. There's a big commandment, the first and great commandment of all. The second is like to it. Yeah. There are greater commands. If there's not, why have the 10 commandments and then the 613 other commandments? Why do that if it's all the same? Clearly there are some that involve life and death. Some involve just minor uh, foibles, if you would, would. And so too, there could be rewards according to things you had done here, to receive the things done in the body, whether good or bad. If there's no such thing as reward, then it just simply doesn't make any sense. And remember, now we're not going to heaven because we sacrifice so much. We're going to heaven because Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. It is by grace you're saved through faith. It's not of yourself, it's the gift of God. Not of works, not of works, lest any man should boast. But when, what are you judged based upon your works? Because that relates to your actual rewards that you will receive. Mm -hmm. So there are rewards for having done those things. In other words, it's like, uh, you know, it's when you are persecuted for your faults and you take it patiently, there's no reward for that. But if you are persecuted for things you didn't do wrong and you take it patiently, the Lord says, that receives my favor. Amen. I look at that and I go, wow, that was that was good. You did good there, Keegan. I'm going to bless you for that. So that's, that's to be expected. And so there must be real so, rewards, real tangible blessings. Just staying here with all the persecution I get from you, there's a lot of reward to be honest. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. yeah. We're almost finished because uh, we're running out of time. But the last thing I wanted to cover, the, one, the question I want to know is, how big is heaven? It's big. <laughs> <laughs> that that's it. Do we do we even have a, a concept or an idea, or, or can we imagine the enormity of heaven? Well, we, we're going to talk more about this as we get along. Cool. So we'll we'll talk more specifics about that. Okay, heaven is up because even the our text says mm -hmm. set your affections that's on it. things above, above yeah. and he ascended and descended. Right. Yeah. So we know those scriptures. A lot of talk about that. And the new heaven and the new earth. Okay, so is heaven big? Honestly, heaven of heavens cannot contain God. Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles two and verse six. Mm. So, however big he the heaven of heavens is, God's bigger. Mm. So, God's creation cannot contain God. Mm. God created the heavens and the earth, so He was already here before there, and I guess He's in what we call heaven. But to say that he can only be in heaven is, yeah. is maybe a little naive. Mm. So he's big. Um, Huge. Yeah. Yeah, but heaven, how big is heaven? I would say it's bigger than the universe. There's an eternity of exploration. Maybe it is the universe. It's, there's an eternity of exploration at, at hand, I guess. It just keeps going. Maybe we get to explore and, and travel and 
see things and who knows. Yeah, I'm hearing Star Trek mu mu music. <laughs> Star Trek, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go where no man has gone before. Yeah. No, um, but no, it's, it's a really cool idea. Uh, I want to explore more of this in detail next week uh, because there is so much to unpack yet. There's there so many lot. scriptures to unpack that we just don't look at. And it, it's crazy. So next week, we're going to talk about the perpetuation of heaven. So that would be it last? Um, pretty good. So once again, we encourage you to, to get stuck into this topic and, and read your Bible and search some of the scriptures, question it, test it. I mean, Paul's saying test, test the scriptures. Is it eternal? Is it eternal? Does it work? Do you even want to be there? Yeah. Uh, Forever. <laughs> Forever. Um, it's a good question to ask. But thanks for joining us. We will see you next week. God bless.